Hey everybody, Tim here with today's episode of Enterprise, Season 1, Episode 24, Two Days and Two Nights. So this episode was a little bit better than I expected it to be. Um, there was actually some twists in there, which was actually kind of, like, better than I expected. Uh, first of all, this episode was directed by Michael Dorn, the actor who played Worf in The Next Generation. So that was kind of cool. Um, and that's kind of important as well, because... Like, Michael Dorn has been an important role in, like, every Ryza episode. If you go back to the original Ryza episode, The Captain's Holiday, that's the first episode you see Michael Dorn without makeup. He's just kind of in the background sitting there chilling. Um, so that's kind of cool. So the last two episodes before this has been Archer trying to get here. And I've said it before, like... We didn't hear about Ryza in the original series. We didn't even hear Ryza in the um, the early parts of The Next Generation. It was a little bit into The Next Generation before we actually heard about it. I'm totally fine with that. Like, some things I have disagreed with Enterprise. Like, no. We, like, to be honest with you, as much as I like Dr. Phlox... Like, it bothers me that he's a Denobulan, because we've never heard about this species before, but he is a main staple for Enterprise. So, but Ryza, I'm okay with. that. The fact that we're, we've heard about it, but we never necessarily visited it before, or at least with Kirk. And to be honest, like, somebody had commented earlier, if Kirk did make it to Ryza, he probably would never have left. So that's okay. So that being said, this whole episode was actually good because when it first started, I was completely against it and I was so bored and I was like, I know how all of this is going to play out. And it actually surprised me. Like I was pleasantly surprised where, because Enterprise has been really cliche. Like every single episode has had some sort of cliche where I'm just like, why are you even bothering doing this? So it turns out that the crew drew lots to figure out who's going to go to Ryza and who's not. As it turns out, most of the bridge crew happened to win, including Captain Archer, Malcolm, Trip, Mayweather, Hoshi, most of the bridge crew. So it's like, oh, what a coincidence that is. And T'Pol even has the line, like, everybody had equal chances, Captain. You need this holiday. And it's like, like that's such a throwaway line. Like, it's like, okay, why don't you just say the bridge crew won? Move it along. And as, like, the shuttle is going down and the camera pans to each person, like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Like, it's difficult because we're looking at it from a 2019 lens to a 2002, I think, like, episode where, like, Malcolm and Trip basically say, like, all they care about is getting laid. Like, that's, that's basically what they say. Hoshi talks about how all she wants to do is, like, work duty and learn new languages. Mayweather, who cares? He's an ensign. Like... Harry Kim and Voyager had a really interesting character story arc. Like he even said as the character, like I why have I not been promoted and stuff like that, but he learned a lot going through. Mayweather has been the most under like used character in all of Enterprise so far. So he's like, "I'm going to go mountain or I'm going to go rock climbing where the rocks change as you climb them." And they're like, "Be careful, you might fall." Wow, big surprise. He falls and breaks a leg. Not a surprise. And Archer talks about how he wants to catch up on reading. It's very Picard-like, and it's like, who cares? Like, you're not an interesting character. So as it continues, like, to be honest with you, Enterprise is more interesting, where Dr. Phlox talks about how he's going to, into hibernation, which is supposed to be, like, six days, but he's he's doing a condensed version, and it's only going to be two days. So it's like, oh, oh, why why even bring this up? Like, it seems really pointless, but you can tell it's going to be important. And as every character storyline, like, slowly unwinds, I was pleasantly surprised where Trip and Malcolm are together and they're like, are you assuming that person's pronoun? Like they actually say, like, are you sure that that's the correct pronoun? Because they're guessing between men and women because they're aliens. And it's so like over the top that it's just 
terrible where at first i was like okay they're gonna get laid and that's gonna be the end of it no sure enough they end up actually falling for these two women that end up being men and they also get mugged so i was like okay that's that's kind of interesting i'm okay with this hoshi like starts to get involved with this one person this one guy who has a very complex language and at first i was completely like oh she's gonna get jumped he's gonna rob her something she's gonna be the damsel in distress because he actually reminded me reminded me of the vulcan that like assaulted to paul like i'm not even sure if it's the same actor i didn't look it up but i was like oh that's who he reminds me of no, like throughout the episode, she actually has a really good time learning different languages, being with this guy. She has her one night stand and she learns some languages and she has a good time. And I was like, way to go, Hoshi. Like, I am all for you right now. And Archer had kind of like a little bit of a twist where he meets this woman with the ugliest chihuahua I have ever seen in my life. And like, it turns out that she's like this undercover spy that's trying to learn more about the the species, the shapeshifters and like all this temporal war stuff. And I was like, I'm so sick of this storyline at this point. Like, who cares? And of course she drugs him at the end and escapes. And I was like, just nobody cares. It's, it's done, it's over with. So like the rise of storyline was actually really interesting because there's so many different things going on. And then on Enterprise, after Mayweather, of course, breaks his leg and they give him some sort of drug that he's allergic to, they have to wake up Dr. Phlox, who has an, his own, like, he's a great actor and he's actually a lot better than I remember, but he's almost drunk. Like, just the way he's trying to wake up and he's like, no, I can do this, I'm the doctor. Like, it's so over the top that it was it was comical when it shouldn't have been. And him trying to treat Mayweather and then just passing out on the, the bed next to him. I don't know. This whole episode had such good potential and then just kind of fell apart depending on which storyline you look at. So for those who have seen this one, which storyline was your favorite? The Trip and Malcolm storyline, the Hoshi storyline, the Archer storyline, or the Dr. Flock storyline? Like so much is going on in this episode. Which one did you guys like more and which one did you guys not like? Go ahead, let me know. Thank you guys for everything. And I will see you guys next time for the season finale, Shockwave.